Recording is on. Do you want to do the intro, Christoph? Told you. <laughs> You're fine. Hey, welcome. It is the 15th of July, 2022, and we are on the Wallet Improvement Project call. This is the Blixt uh, Design Sprint, where we've been redesigning the um, wallet interface of Blixt. And um, we're now moving on to some usability testing and prototyping. So that's basically what this call is going to be about. Does everyone want to maybe do a quick introduction as well? Um, no, I think it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So guys, yeah, it's the it's the next phase. Christoph has the the flow open in front of him. We had some really nice feedback from um, from Jakub and um, the other guy. I forget his name. Taiwo. Um, also on some screen states, they, they made some suggestions with regards to the text as well. Um, so yeah, those were really helpful, um, getting some other eyes on the, uh, on the actual designs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've created us a fig jam document cause I want things to be as interactive as possible. And I don't want to be the one sitting here doing all of the talking. Um, I just want everyone to feel like they're welcome to talk and to collaborate and share how we can, you know, plan the whole research process because um, we want to, you know, create a prototype and then um, do some usability testing on the prototype. Um, so, and I guess we're going to have to figure out if the user flow that we've designed is actually sufficient to do the user test usability testing on or whether we have to build any additional screen states um i'm going to just share my screen very quickly mm -hmm. i had a little bit of fun in fig jam um, and i created this very simple diagram um, which we'll all just jump into just now. It's just kind of thinking about um, why. This is the Simon Sinek's why, how, and what. So it's basically um, trying to think about what we want to find out when we do the usability testing, why we want to find out this information, who do we actually want to do the usability test on. Um, this question is multiplied by two, so I will just remove it. And also important is who would we like to not do the usability tests on? So it's kind of just trying to think um, what kind of information we want to figure out. Um, Millie and Christoph, I think, have been sufficiently involved in the entire process from beginning to end, um, but I'm sure you'll understand everything as well, Diana, with your experience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, more just to, to be sure, like the goal of the call, you want to help, help, um, sorry, you want to figure out like sort of the question we want to ask for the user testing part? Um, I think maybe trying to figure out what we want to understand. What is it that we actually want to understand? Because it feels like we did the whole research and then we, we, um, we've designed this prototype now, we've designed this user flow. And it's trying to think together about what we actually want to try to understand by doing the usability tests, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. And if we, if we come up with what we want to try to understand from there, we can maybe come up with the questions um, that we can ask the users. Um, I see Christoph is already in the Fig Jam document. Okay. Feel um, free to just jump in, uh, everyone. Um, sure? Yeah, so conversation-wise, uh, well, feel free to jump in. But uh, I mean, the, the, the whole project started with the initial design sprint. And then the uh, a lot of, one, something that came up was that there was a good amount of friction in the onboarding. And then the goal was to rethink the onboarding process. So I think what we want to find out is basically if this design addresses 
those problems and does not yeah. create any new big problems. Yeah. That's uh, what I would say. All right. And um... So I, I would, I mean, we could list out those problems. Like if the problem is users do not understand X, then, you know, will do users understand this afterwards or users get stuck in screen Y, you know, can users make it through that particular thing? Or like, well, I'm not, ex I don't, I just don't quite remember what those initial problems were. You know, I you, be, I, um, Millie, do you want to maybe list the main problems that we came across in the research findings? Yeah, I think I need to pull up the, when I, I did my research on Telegram, that document where affinity diagram stuff, there's a, there was a lot of things uh, in there. Just give me a second to find it. <laughs> there was a lot about like, one of the issue was uh, people not understanding that they needed to restart uh, the app to enable tour. Um, it was like lagging a lot. Mm -hmm. um, another one was about opening channels. Um, let me just find out first that, oh, I got it. I think an another one was, I think there was this conversation, yeah, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was conversation around the difference between new users and the ones who want to customize it, everything and the balance between those. Yeah. Right? Good one. There was that too. And um, it would be good to ask if that new flow works equally well to make both of these types of people happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're already writing that. Call it maybe the happy path. <laughs> the, the torturous path. The torturous path. The, the uh, DIY path. I don't know. We need we need a good name. There's a happy path, and then there's the choose your own adventure. Choose your own adventure path. Uh, yeah. I call it the customization path, which sounds very boring, but um, you know. I mean, I think DIY like gives the, the right uh, impression. Do it yourself. Well, why not? I just share with you guys um, like the affinity diagram that I did a while back. So that could be a good uh, document to look at for what do we want to find out. Or do you want to present the, the a summary of the findings, maybe if that's not too much of work? If that's if you can remember, I guess I know it was a bit of a while back. Yeah, so it's um, basically connectivity issues with Tor. Uh, that was a big one, and then um, difficulty with autopilot. Um, also, sending, receiving, knowing where the funds went and when they will arrive. So mm -hmm. that's sort of related mm -hmm. all with channels. Um, oh yeah, difficulty of not knowing the minimal amount needed to open a channel. And so, yeah. Connectivity is a, is a big thing, to be honest. Connectivity. Yeah, I don't know how accurate we can test that, even it's just a prototype, so we shouldn't have a <laughs> connectivity problem. But um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And then uh, there was also a confusion with on-chain and lightning balance. Confusion with on-chain and lightning balance. Yeah. What was the confusion? Basically, they were not, they didn't understand that the balance that was on the home screen was lightning only. So often when yep. they were closing a channel, they were like, where my fence go, you know, but they have to go to the menu and punch in balances there. It was sort of hidden. Yeah, I, that is totally understandable. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Diana, have you do you know what the Blix interface UI looks like? No, actually, I don't. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Um, I'm sharing a Figma link here with screenshots of the application. Uh, maybe that gives you just a quick reference point. Thanks. And um, also there was a, a confusion, uh, I mean, or not our understanding that Blix is, is a node and not enough user uh, did know about that and the implication of it, which is basically the need to keep the app on to make it work when they send like and receive. Because, and th that's not explained anywhere, right? I mean, maybe there is on the website, it says like there is a sentence, but it's not like on the forefront, I would say. Mm. We've got quite some good ones here. Uh, Mo, regarding your question in the, under what do we find out, does the education in the beginning of the user flow helps the user to understand understand what exactly? Good one, good one. Um, the education that we did at the beginning of the flow was mostly about opening channels, right? Um, I'm going to have to go back to the... Because this is the part that we specifically added in it was that lightning 101 that you designed mm -hmm. because you know hampers really liked this and he really wanted us to include this okay so i guess it would be understand how lightning works maybe that's more specific um yeah the thing so is, I, I would... think yeah, I think the question should say, like, does this education part help the user to understand how Blix works, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you want to have people to use Blix. Mm -hmm. How to use the app. Um, yeah, I had a similar thing with a uh, question about the, the difference between on-chain and lightning. Uh, you know, you said that this is something that happens when a channel is closed, which happens much later in the life cycle. It's not, it yeah. doesn't happen during onboarding. So if you, if you start testing the onboarding, then your users will probably not get to the point where they close a channel that might mm -hmm. be out of scope for, mm. for one test. Mm. That, that, that's where you might have to test the situation where, okay, you're an advanced user, you know, right now you want to do this and that. And you might want need to put people in a different scenario with a different um, prototype where they start with the balance and multiple channels and whatnot. So you might have you might have to s split this in two tests here. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, uh, I also think perhaps like on the main screen, like uh, where they request and pay, we could have somewhere that it says like lightning balance only. Um, but I, I totally understand your point, Christoph, uh, regarding uh, not to include uh, in the current testing, maybe. Do we have any balanced screens in the test? <clears throat> you have uh, when you open your channel, basically. Is there... And also, correct me if I'm wrong, Mo, but like when... No, I'm wrong, perhaps, but... When you open a channel with autopilot, that's an on-chain transaction. Autopilot, when you open it with autopilot. But um, then it goes on your lightning balance anyways after, right? I'm not sure if you win it on autopilot. I don't know, Millie. I actually don't know the answer to that question. If it's if it, the automatic channel opening is on autopilot. I do not know. No, it, 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 it ha I mean, that's what the autopilot does. It, yeah. it, it manages channels for you. So you need to deposit your Bitcoin into a swap address. Yeah. And then the, or, or into your own address, and then it will automatically yeah, it does it for, you. for you with the Blix uh, LSD. Because otherwise you will just receive the Bitcoin in your on-chain address, and then that's it. 
and you yeah. have to manually channel the open uh, open the channel yeah so i feel like we can move on to the next question i don't know how everyone else feels i feel we've got quite some good ones here do you think we've covered the main ones over here in this mm -hmm. i know that the channel opening was quite a big one as well um do we have um open a channel open a channel Because Millie, wasn't there quite a lot of, of the, the ones about opening a channel? I remember that being users yeah. have difficulties regarding opening channels. That's if you look on the Figma board, that's quite a lot of um mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But also there's um to Christoph's point earlier, maybe also this should be also a separate testing. Let's say a user wants to open multiple channels, not just mm -hmm. one like in the onboarding. I, I would see some user having difficulty afterwards opening further multiple channels, you know. Um, but that could be a question for another day. Mm. Sending receiving funds uh, don't should know about opening channels, improvements for channels opening. It's a lot of stuff about the channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, that's, um, I would just focus on the onboarding here. And yeah, yeah. Which yeah, the, I think so. Which the process is, you send in some amount to this receive address. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was actually curious if you remember, there's a, there's something here, Millie, that you wrote down. No more shady auto openings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a message from Empus. But I think yeah. at the beginning, like users were forced to open a channel with uh, autopilot and people didn't understand what was happening. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I think that that's the, the shady yeah. auto opening. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what, what, what happens in this screen here. Get started, send on-chain funds to the Bitcoin address to the right, a channel will be automatically open for you, which I think is very straightforward. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's also kind of small and it doesn't really guide you. It's easy to overlook it. And then mm -hmm. there's like, if you send funds there, it doesn't tell you anything. You, you just don't know. You kind of have to wait and hope that something happens. And there's no way to opt out here either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um... th this, this is, is a real key thing here. And I don't know how you test that. Like in a, let's say you have a prototype, you show some people, some person a phone with a clickable prototype, and then they see, okay, I guess I need to deposit Bitcoin now. How do I do that with this prototype? Yeah. You, know, you tell them like, oh, just just click here, and that kind of pre that's like a fake deposit. Yeah. And we'll just skip to the next part. I I think like I mean even if we can deposit for real in um, in user testing, I think I would still want to see how, I mean, if it's, I would sort of ask, like, act like it's real, like, how would you, you know, deposit to, to open uh, your first channel? And they would, like, mm -hmm. open, like, their app and, like, do it. And if they mm -hmm. did the action, they know right away, then that tells me, like, they know what to do. If they if they're like, uh, I really don't have no idea what to do then. Yeah, you obviously don't know. <laughs> How does everyone feel about maybe moving on to the second question, which I've just changed on the fly, <laughs> which is what will we do with the results that we get from the usability testing? Okay. Um, what do you think, what do you think we can do with, uh, with the results that we get? I mean, 
I guess it's to improve the user onboarding flow. Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. You, if it's, yeah. if it's all good, you implement it. If you yeah. find problems, you tweak it. If it doesn't work at all, you go back to the drawing board or you test more people. Yeah. Or you retest if you feel like the, your test setup failed and then you maybe need to tweak how you test it and then retest. I'm just making some notes here. If we find particular screen states that uh, Jacob just said, I think he said he cannot join, that users don't understand, then we will change them. Change them. And who do we want to test on? That um, seems quite straightforward, but actually, who do we want to test on? I would say you want some expert in Sanyumi. By expert, just because I, I know some people are around like Bitcoin developers, <laughs> those mm -hmm. would be the expert. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, would be a good target, I think. So you you could yeah you could ask so you can you can first do informal testing, which is a developer or some designer who really you know is very well experienced, and the developer might say like it, it's not going to work. This is not really how it works. You can't do that. Or so, or a designer might say you know typically best practice is here to do X Y Z. Like they might just see something that you haven't spotted, and that will improve your test. Mm -hmm. And then you can open it up to five other people, uh, maybe randomly grab them from the community and Blix, ask if they mm -hmm. want to test um, or, or in the design community and ask some people. Yeah, we had, a, good sensitivity. we had someone who jumped on the call with us. Remember Millie the last time? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Vic? Oh, Aaron? Aaron? Um, there was two guys, I think they jumped. I mean, I don't know which call you, you're talking about, but I remember Aaron being there and Vic being there. Um, Vic is a designer. Aaron, I think, is a designer and a front-end developer, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they were quite keen. And yeah. who did we not want to include in our testing? Uh, like my mother, like <laughs> she, she doesn't know about Bitcoin, like yet fully to understand. I, um, I'm teaching her. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think something hemp is always, always uh, important. It should be people that already know Bitcoin, but don't really yeah. know Lightning. So if yeah. you put that in. So people who don't even know Bitcoin should not be part of it. There has to be some certain prior experience or knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I just had the idea. Well, maybe we don't want to take uh, the time. The time, but no, Bosch is doing those design critiques reviews. So it could be a design. <laughs> I'm gonna write it here because if you watch it, yes. <laughs> cool. So not Bosch. <laughs> I am actually going to write this as a sticky note. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. But, yeah. But honestly, I was thinking more we could use him, but I know it's more like we're designers too. So I think we should be able to figure it out as well. <laughs> but the, the is really design good. Crits, <laughs> yeah, the design crits, it's really about the craft, like the, the final execution of a lot of the yeah. small. That's what the crits are focusing on. Um, which is part of this test, but it's not the most important thing, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of, okay. So who do we want to test on? We have developers and designers here, this one, but then we also have not Bosch. Bosch is a designer. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of conflict over here. Over here with these two. <laughs> Because yeah. you know, then we're saying Bosch is not a designer. What is you know, it? you know, this is being recorded, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Not smart for my part, but it, it's all it's just love, Bash. It's all love. <laughs> he can he can take a joke. He's, he's yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um... yeah, I, I think you know, I think all of these, all of these, the people in this group. There's uh, maybe maybe if you send it initially to a couple people, you want professional feedback. But I think beyond that, you want uh, normal people feedback, not professional yeah. critique. You want them to use it as if they just they were just casual users and they just want to try out this wallet and just go through the flow and kind of turn off their their uh, professional eye and brain for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Actually, like, I mean, wife and girlfriends of Bitcoiners w would be a, a good um, to test on. They would fit in the newbie category because they understand Bitcoin, and but they are not expert either. So, so no husbands and boyfriends. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it happens there. I, I mean, I have a girlfriend that um, she's the Bitcoiner, and her husband is not so the bit corner but yeah i mean like often like the partner is <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay we did good we did really good then the step the next step that i wanted to move on to is creating an actual scenario now i found this little image because i i love images of this guy okay. he's looking on his computer for a car then he scans a QR code. I'm not quite sure why he's scanning a QR code. Maybe that's showing him his closest dealership or something. Mm -hmm. He walks up to the dealership. It is what he has an appointment. And then, you know, we can just assume that that's a car that he's now going to look at. He takes a picture of the car. Oh, and then he's purchased the car. So he's actually purchased the car using his phone. Um, so that's basically the entire scenario that he would go through from the time he he has a need. So he has a use. So this is the user. This is the guy with the glasses. Who is the user? What's motivating them? Well, I, I can't know what his motivations are, but maybe he needs a car really fast. So he's just finding his closest dealership. Um and then what's his intention and what high level action does he want to do? And what is the end result? The end result is that he buys a car. So I'm kind of trying to really take a real life scenario of someone who's going to be using the wallet um, and actually imagine ourselves in their shoes. They're in this place, in this time, they have a need, they have a motivation. Um, so, yeah, just try to think of an actual story or particular scenario that we can test out. And there's many scenarios, I guess. Um. Okay, so here's, here's what I would, would do. So the idea is that Bitcoiners who want to try out Lightning, why yeah. do Bitcoiners try out Lightning? So one thing I've seen a bunch of times is that Bitcoiners, they go to Bitcoin meetups. And like yeah. Bitcoin <laughs> Munich here, they go to meetups. They prefer places where you can actually pay with Lightning. Like there are yeah. two or three cafes here where you can pay with Lightning. Yeah. Sometimes there are also Bitcoin events like a hackathon or so where it's like, oh, you can you can buy a beer with pay a beer with Lightning with somebody built like this custom beer vending machine. Um, so it could be like a Bitcoiner who is about to go to an event maybe the same day. And they've never used Lightning, but they know like there's going to be something with Lightning at that event. So they just kind of want to set it up and they're heading out in like two hours, right? So they want to make sure that they don't have a ton of time to get into it, but they just kind of want to set it up so they can try it out later. Maybe that yeah. could be one scenario and there's a motivation why they want to do it and they want to have a little bit of money on it, a few euros, dollars, whatever, to then later on actually make that payment. And there's a little bit of time sensitivity there. Like they don't have time to read up a ton. They just kind of want to get it going. So it's because he's going to the event. He's going to a Bitcoin meetup. So that's the motivation. What? Yeah, and there's something there's something about lightning happening there. And you know, the they read that the cafe is accepting lightning, and they they want to, or they're they're the bar or the event, and they want to pay their beer because. 
they've heard so about the, it. The intention but... is probably going to be pay for a beer then. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Or... And they don't want to embarrass themselves in front of the other Bitcoiners. They're like, eh, you know. <laughs> I don't know. That could, that could be some subliminal motivation. <laughs> Feel free to jump in and type any other stories, you guys. I'm just typing what Christoph is saying. <laughs> I, I'm just making stuff up. Make some, make up something completely different, and mm -hmm. we can pick out of all the stories. So the high level action that he wants to do, Christoph, is basically just wants to onboard himself as quick as possible. Um, as quick as possible, and fund his wallet. And in the end, he's happy because he's paid for his beer. Cool. We have a scenario. Mm -hmm. Good. That is a very realistic scenario. Yeah. I think that's what I did a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it is. He wants to onboard himself quickly because he's just stepping out of the house. It's like App Store, get Lightning Wallet, download, onboard, da, 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 because he wants to be able to pay for that beer. Cool. Millie, I see you're creating another story. Yeah. Um, Bitcoiner wants to buy meat from a local farmer. Mm. Farmer suggesting the Bitcoiner to pay in Bitcoin and suggests to use Blix because he's using Blix. Okay. Okay. He wants to pay for the meat in Bitcoin. Okay. Diana, are you still there? Are we? Are you following? Yep. Okay. If you, you know, feel free to chime in or ask any questions. You know, this is totally open. We're just having fun here as well. He downloads Blix, he opens a channel and he sends the payment to the farmer. Cool. Two very Yeah, so questions. that's a tricky one because to open the channel, you first need to deposit Bitcoin from another wallet because your wallet's still empty. Mm -hmm. So there's um, so the the that user already needs to have another wallet available on the same device and be able to make that transfer. Mm -hmm. And then it takes it takes like it will take like twenty minutes. 10 minutes to make the transfer and then 10 minutes to open the channel. So the, that is not a smooth experience necessarily. Maybe maybe there can, can be something else in the story where it is kind of time location sensitive, but somehow the person has enough time to set this up. Mm -hmm. We're actually uh, figuring this out ourselves at Albi as well with the onboarding. So our onboarding ends where user needs to acquire some Bitcoin onto their uh, wallet. And we have scripts, scenarios where they go and buy uh, cards, like top up, uh, like gift cards that they buy with uh, Fiat 
and then the Bitcoin comes to their wallet or they send it from another wallet or they uh, receive payment from someone else. Like they upload a piece of their work and wait till it's sold. Mm -hmm. So we are, my head is uh, right there right now. The, the good thing here in this scenario, that is a tricky one. The good thing here is that um, with Hampus's target audience is people who already know and have Bitcoin. So they already know what to do. But with Albi, it may be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Cold start problem, I think is what it's called. Okay, what's the end result? Like maybe in my um, uh, scenario, I could add like, it's suggesting uh, Blake's because like the payment is instant, you know, and the Bitcoin could have just uh, but if you're a bitcoiner most likely you already have like a wallet yeah yeah an on-chain wallet yeah I'm just wondering, this is completely new to, to me as well, because I'm just seeing in our flow, we have that the channel is opened. So we have the channel is opening and that the channel is opened. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering because then this is just the onboarding and open channel. So ch channel checks, channel open. I'm just wondering, because then we would have to, these scenarios that we're testing, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, because the current user flow that we have, you can, it's pretty clear where it ends. You know? The payment, yeah. Yeah. So the, um, you're just talking about this gap here uh so th there is this gap right the and i i, I that's uh, with the first use page revision something i looked into the, there's a point where the wallet tells you like hey here you deposit this to this address do something and the wallet will not know until if the user's done it until that transaction is detected and there can be a gap in the middle and the user and the wallet cannot show anything um and so that's one step. And then there's the channel opening, which is it's just like the second thing. And maybe that is, uh, I think one of the mistakes that that's going on in, in the current fixed wallet is that it just, it just says like, hey, do this, but there's no options or like, okay, why should I do this? And how does mm -hmm. it work? And how long does it take? And mm -hmm. there's no button that says, you know, even if it's placebo button where I can say, I made the deposit. And then maybe in the background, it can check, like did it detect something? And maybe it could say, well, you know, we didn't detect anything, but sometimes it takes a few minutes. Why don't you try again in a few minutes? You know, and something that addresses people, um, that allows them to learn more in case they have problems, they don't know what to do. And if in case they already acted on it, but the wallet cannot, just technically cannot detect it yet, that um, they, st they still can kind of say, like they, they still have something to do, right? That, that addresses their anxiety or curiosity or nervousness about the situation. Fully agree. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, we're at 50 minutes in. Uh, how happy are you with the scenario? so far should we could should we just stay on this one or do you want to something else for the next 10 minutes 
Um, I think we would need to see. I think I'm. I don't know if everyone's happy with these scenarios that we've created. I'm. I think I'm good with them. I guess the the we would have to kind of very loosely see if the user flow that we've designed is actually able to address these scenarios that we've created. Um, because I guess that would be the next step. Can the, this scenario actually take place in the current user flow that we've created? Yeah, the, the, you know, with the prototypes, you sometimes need to cheat a little bit. Like have, yeah. sometimes when you <laughs> made a bridge time, it's like you have some secret area you can click on and it's like, oh, five hours. You know, just like in a in a yeah. in this cartoon mm -hmm. panel, it's like you know, ten minutes later in the corner, yeah. something like that. So yeah, you need to uh, create the prototype, put it on your phone, and then match it, and then and you have to think about too, how do you tell this story to a person when you sit down with somebody? You tell them, okay, imagine you are this and yeah. that. You want to do this. What do you do mm -hmm. next? Like, where do you ask? What do you? How do you ask so you don't lead them too much? Exactly. Uh, but yeah. just enough. So yeah, there's, you know, it's just like practicing for a presentation in a way. Yeah. yeah. So I think we, we, we might have to test. It feels almost like the, the, we need to see if the scenarios that we've created, we're able to test it on the current screen states that we have. If we create a, a prototype just using the screen states we have. If possible, okay, great. Maybe there's going to be some other screen states that are going to be needed to be added in, which probably likely that's the case. And then um, it's it's going to be a very iterative process because we say, okay, this is what we're testing. Then we test on each other. So we just have a phone call between us and just you know pretend that I'm the farmer going through the steps and doing the steps. And then we'll see that certain screen states are missing then we'll go back, we'll add in those screen states, and then I guess we'll be able to move on to, you know, proper usability testing, I guess. Um, I don't know. What do you guys yeah, think? Because the, thinking out loud. Yeah, I think it's a good idea because the last thing you want to do is schedule a test, get somebody ready, you go, you go into it, and one minute in, you realize, oh, man, it's not working, or we missed something, or so you want to do kind of more like low-key, quick, you know, uh, yeah. are testing yourself, so it's yeah. really ironed out. Absolutely. What do you think, Millie? No, I think it's uh, the way to go, like test it out a bit like ourselves and then after go to user testing. Yeah. Is this um, a clickable prototype that works? No, this is, this is only screen states. Um, I created okay. a new tab called prototyping workspace. Um, just the one all the way at the top, so we can kind of use those screen states. Yeah, um, it's just a copy of the uh, of the original one. Um, this is where it's going to happen. Have you have you set up prototypes before? I have set up prototypes before. Um, how about you, Milly and Diana? Yeah, I, I did that. Uh, the yeah, yeah, it's it's not a secret for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. You as well, Diana. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a couple of prototyping geniuses on this call. Awesome. I mean, I wouldn't call myself a genius, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay. So how do we do this? Because um, the you know it's basically just going to be one prototype that we're going to create. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's a. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel it would be easier if it's a one person job. I agree. You know. Fully agree. Um, I can own it. Hundred percent. I'd I'd really like that because because uh, I'm away for uh, for a bit. So if you could uh, create the prototype, I'd be very very happy. Sounds good. I'll cool. put this on on my list. Cool. And that brings up to five minutes, so we're good to finish the call on time. Any thoughts, guys? Um, exciting. Then, yeah. It is. The next, right? So the next call, will it be uh, next Friday? I'm away for a bit. Um, okay. I'm back on the 29th, so it will probably be first week of August. Sounds good. So you've got a, 
a nice space of time to enjoy yourself with the, with the prototyping. Awesome. Yeah, if you want to, and I'm sure other people are happy to do that too. If you want to send me the prototype to just for a quick check or some feedback, feel free to do so. Oh, awesome. Great. Yeah, it is. It is really exciting to test if this little baby that we've created actually does what we need it to do. Prepare for the yeah. hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really appreciate it, Millie, that you're happy to do the uh, the um, the prototype because then we can once that's ready, then we can test it on each other and um, test it on maybe one or two other designers in the community, and then move to some actual users. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's starting to be like really tangible from when we started that project, but it's cool. It's, it's nice cool that, we that we kept going. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's good. Okay. I'm uh, yeah, I think we're good. I, um, I don't have, um, I, I think we've covered everything we've needed to cover in this call. I think the next call we'll just talk about anything that went wrong with the prototype that we've created any additional screen stays that need to be added in and move move from there i guess mm -hmm. yep. cool uh, you can probably turn off the recording and i was wondering is the next call happening now in four minutes or an hour later let me stop <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop this recording one moment. <laughs>